Hey guys, this is Steve Losh, and I figured I'd do a quick screencast to show off my VimRC file. Um, it's got some cool stuff in it, so I figured I'd show you what it looks like and some of the cooler parts of it, whatever I can get to in 15 minutes. Um, okay, so I'm going to open up Vim. Let me increase the font size for you. And I'll just full screen Vim. Okay. Oh, there we go. Um, yeah, so let me fold this. This is my VimRC file. And you can see down here, well, if I go to the bottom, you can see that it's about 1,500 lines of code. Um, it's a little bit messy, and there's some stuff that uh, probably needs to be cleaned up, but um, it gets the job done. And I have folding set up using fold method marker, uh, so it folds nicely and it's a little more organized. So um, The first section is just basically called pathogen. Um, and sets no compatible because it's 2012. And let's see, the second section is basic options. Just a whole bunch of standard options, you know, uh, visual bell, hidden, all the, the normal stuff. Nothing terribly interesting here, although uh, I do have uh, list cares set up. So you can see here, um, I'm using the TextMate style, you know, the, the Unicode tab character. Um, a nice little end of line character. And then extends and proceeds are stuff that I don't see very often in other people's files, but they're really kind of cool. Uh, if you open up a second split and then you have wrap turned off. So if I set no wrap, um, you can see that the lines don't wrap anymore. But uh, when it squeezes the lines, uh, it uses the proceeds and extends characters uh, to indicate that. So I don't know. I like these two little characters. The, the, uh, ang they're they're not really angle brackets. The angle brackets look like that. They're Unicode characters. I forget exactly what they are, but if you just go to my VimRC, you can uh, you can copy them. So let me set wrap because I'll go insane if I don't. Okay. Um. Let's see what else. Uh, show break is nice. Show break is basically a character when you have wrap turned on at the beginning of the line. You can see it right here. Right shows the little return character. Uh, what else do we have here? Nothing else too crazy. Um, I have my wild menu ignore settings. I have quite a few of them, but nothing too crazy here. You know? Um, yeah, this line, this line is kind of fun. It, uh, it tells Vim not to back up stuff in temp or private temp. And it turns out that if you use uh, cron, if you try to edit your crontab file and you don't have this, if you if you let Vim create the backup files, it explodes. So not a good thing. Um, here, I have Vim save files as soon as I lose focus. Um, I use version control. I use Mercurial or Git. So um, oh, we got plenty of time. So I really don't ever want to not save my files. Um, it's just easier that way. And then whenever you resize the window, I resize all the splits. So let me go ahead and do that. So if I make a couple of splits and I drag them around a little bit, um, actually, so I equalize them and I resize the window and Vim automatically keeps them nice and equal for me. So um, I like having them all the, the same size. Some people don't. Some people like to micromanage them, but it's I don't find that useful. Um, let's see here. Yeah, somebody suggested this one to me on Twitter, this, this little auto command. Basically, um, when you close and open a file, it, it'll make sure that you're on the same line. So I'm going to be on this line, and I'm going to quit Vim. I'm going to open it up again and edit my VimRC file again, and I'm right back on that line where I started. So that's kind of handy. Okay. Um, tab settings, nothing too crazy. Uh, backups, I keep everything in a couple of uh, directories under vim temp. Uh, the thing you'll notice is that there's an extra slash at the end of these. And if I ls these, uh, if I ls these folders, so tilde vim uh, temp undo. Oh, crap. <laughs> yeah, you can see. Um, what it does, instead of just creating a swap file or a backup file with the name of the file, 
it'll include the full path, but with the slashes replaced with percents, so that if I edit two different models.py files, they don't cr uh, clash with each other, even though I'm sticking everything into this one folder. So that's handy. Uh, you can read the help on these options, and that, that'll tell you that anyway. So, um, And I don't use swap files anymore. Oops, it's now 2012. Hey, made a, made a nice little edit there. Um, leader, I use comma for leader, and I use backslash for local leader. Uh, color scheme, pretty simple. Um, I like to highlight conflict markers, but nothing too crazy there. So that's basically it. I have some abbreviations, um, stuff for my uh, my website, you know, stuff like that. Um, look of disapproval, because I hate typing the Unicode characters. A uh, bunch of other stuff, nothing, nothing too interesting there. Searching. Um, I have slash mapped to uh, automatically put in the backslash v to turn on very magic mode because I don't want to use Vim's crazy weird regular expressions. I'd rather use Python or Perl regular expressions. Um, bunch of normal options, you know, ignore case, smart case. You can read the help on all these, but nothing too crazy there. Um, I use leader space to clear matching. So if I search for something and then I want to clear it, I just type uh, leader, which is comma space, so comma space. It's really easy to hit. Um, I use match it, and I've remapped tab um, at the beginning here to match. So if I hit tab, so if I hit tab, it's way easier than typing percent. Um, I remap uppercase D to uh, delete to the end of the line. Um, I have these mappings N and uh, capital N that basically when I search for something. Um, when I press next, it'll always make sure that uh, I'm in the center of the screen, so I know where to look. Otherwise, it jumps around the screen, and I can't really tell. Um, I also like to not move when I press star. So if I press star, normally you would jump to the next match. Um, I prefer not to do that. Um, so I just do star, and then I can press N if I want to get to the next matches. Um, so I'm jumping around. Um, I have this window resizing mapping. I don't use it very often, but it's in there. Should probably get rid of it because I don't use it very often. But um, I have H and L, the capital versions, bound to go to the beginning and the end of the line. You can see. Um, I really like these. I think of eight like so. Normally, you use lowercase h to go left. So I think of uppercase h as a stronger version of that. And same with L. L usually goes right, so uppercase L is a stronger version of that. It's just easier to type. Um, I do have control A and control E bound in uh, insert mode. So if I'm here and I do uh, control A, I'll go to the beginning, control E goes to the end. I'm just used to typing them from the shell, so. Um, these two mappings are kind of cool. They open a quick fix window for whatever I searched for last. So if I search for no remap, and I do leader slash, um, it's going to open a quick fix window that just shows me all of them, and I can just jump to it, right? Um, and same for, actually, um, so if I search for no re, and then I do leader question mark, it acts for that. Um, I don't know, know why I didn't, oh, it acts for that, but as the word boundary. So if I I can do star and then leader question mark. Hmm. Oh, right. I'm in a different folder. I'm not in my VimRC file. Right. Okay. But yeah, basically what it does is just execute ACK and put the results into the quick fix window, and it searches for whatever I searched for in Vim. So it's really handy. These are just some fixing of line-wise reselection. I'm going to skip a bunch of this stuff. Ooh, this... Uh, highlight word is kind of fun. Um, basically, I have uh, h1, h2, h3 uh, with a leader prefix to give me some highlights. So I can do uh, leader h1, and it'll highlight whatever my current cursor, the word that it's on, in orange. And then I could do uh, leader h2, and it'll highlight it in green. Well, let me let me uh, let me do I know remap there. Um, leader h2. And then, oh, no, that's right. And then I can do leader h3, and it remaps it in pink. And then, of course, I can do 
normal star, normal searching. So I really have like four levels. Sometimes this is really handy um, when I'm looking at a particularly terrible piece of code um, that's kind of hard to understand. Um, so it can just be handy to wrap your head around what's going on and see where everything is. So that's handy. Um, yeah, and then this other little block is uh, a little thing I stole from Screwloose's blog. Um, if you visually search and then type star, it'll search for whatever you have visually highlighted. So, handy. Uh, folding, nothing too special. I use space to fold and unfold. Um, nothing too crazy. Um, I do use leader Z. I have leader Z mapped to basically focus the current fold. So, if I type leader Z, it folds everything except it unfolds enough that I can see the current line. Um, so if I'm doing a bunch of stuff, I get my file all messed up, there's lots of folds open, I can just type leader Z and it'll focus on what I'm currently doing, which is handy. And then you can see the fold text. I have a custom fold text function. I mean, it, you can see it right here. Uh, it basically has the line, dot, 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 um, and then the number of uh, folded lines over there, kind of out of the way. I like it. Um, I destroy a couple of keys that I hate. Nothing special there. Um, I won't go into the file type specific stuff. There's too much of it. Um, quick editing. Oh yeah, I have a bunch of keys bound um, to edit various files that I edit pretty often. So if I want to edit my HGRC, I just type leader EH and I'll be editing that. Um, leader EV is for VimRC. That's what I used uh, right in the beginning of the screencast to open this file. Um, and a bunch of other things. Nothing crazy there, but it's really handy and makes it much easier for me to just add stuff to my VimRC or my HDRC when I'm in the middle of working and then get back to actually working. So, um, This shell command, I kind of hacked this together, uh, but basically what it does is, um, so if I type shell and then like ls, um, it runs the shell command and sticks the, uh, the output in a buffer so that I can do whatever I want with it. Um, and then I have leader bang, just it's a little easier to type than colon shell space. So I do that. Um, this might have to be a two part screencast, I think. Uh, so I'm going to cut this off so that YouTube doesn't scream at me and uh, start recording the next one. Cool. See you in a bit, guys.